Hello everyone, welcome to another Power Talk with Archana. This is your platform to reach out to the stars. Plan your success with me, Archana, as I lead you, inspire you, support you to unleash your passions and expertise, coach you and mentor you to achieve your success goals and help you carve your dream life you've always, always dreamed for. Come, welcome to my world as I collaborate with business leaders from across the world. Let's meet one such business leader today. Maya Alhawari is a part of my professional network and based in Dubai, UAE. She's a director of planning and chairperson of board of governors at Dubai Carmel School. A strategic leader, she aces the art of developing and implementing learning strategies and programs. She brings to the table pragmatic leadership and inputs for all strategic human resources, learning and organizational development plans. With the objective, she works with the directors and top management teams. Maya is also a TEDx speaker and loves to share her experiences, learnings as a community and social responsibility expert. Let's welcome Maya Alhavari on board. Hello Maya, how are you doing? I'm fine, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm absolutely fine. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all ours, Maya. Let's start this journey and talk to us about your experiences, your learnings. So let's start. We would love to know from you about leadership since you have a vast experience and you've been in the industry for more than a decade and you've been a very popular leader. We know that. Please tell us, give us few commandments, Maya's commandments on how to become a popular leader in one's organization. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, I like to start by saying that I came, I, I, I came to this um, position after quite a long journey of leading schools. So I was a vice principal for eight years, and then two years with His Highness Sheikh Nahyan bin Barak Al Nahyan, as a, I was a, a, under him under his leadership as a principal leading the niche of boutique of schools in the Middle East. That was in the in higher colleges of technology in Dubai. After leading for ten years uh, and being customer oriented, uh, front desk dealing with parents, um, I sort of had um, a change of heart, if you may, and it became more to me more of somebody that wants to be on the thinking, strategic, planning, developing whether it was operations or academic i wanted to be on that end of the table i so i've been chairperson of the board of Gover governors now for around uh eight years this is my ninth year so it has been a journey and being front desk is completely being very different from being back office um, but if I were to say uh, a whole collective, just a collective view of just leading leadership in general as an educational leadership, um, number one, you definitely have to be thoughtful. Yeah. You have to be thoughtful of the people around you. You have to understand um, who you're dealing with. If you're dealing with education, that's one. Number two. You have to have passion for what you want and what you're what you're dealing with. As academics, we 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 can't think of it as purely business. There's something more to it. There's there's more of a humane touch, look and feel. Yes. You have yes. to really be passionate about educating others and giving out that much of care. So being thoughtful is one. Uh, being humane is another. Um, definitely kind but firm so you have to be firm as well yeah. um, people don't understand what firm means firm is more of somebody that is that is very strategic can see the bigger picture and yeah. can say is able to say no politely the people think that firmness you need to be rude you don't need to be rude now I tell you from experience, I, I was never somebody that now my PhD is in e-educational leadership. But before, when I started my journey, I had no experience 
And yeah. I, you know, when you, when you graduate immediately from graduation to vice principal position, and you've never yeah. been even a teacher, mistakes, you, you see them more. You're more prone to making bigger mistakes even yeah. because you don't have the experience because you don't see the smaller picture. You don't see the details. So I, you're talking to somebody that, that learned it the hard way. I had to be there and learn it backwards. So my mistakes no, no. were, I wouldn't say fatal, but they were at one point um, uh, mistakes. So, so learning to be firm but kind is a big thing. Yeah. If yeah. I were to say on a different, uh, that's on a characteristics uh, uh, point of view. If I were to look at it from a pure leadership point of view, today in the fourth industrial revolution, you have to be very forward thinking. Yeah. You yeah. call yourself today a digital leader. You don't call yourself just a transformational leader. And you Absolutely. say, you're, you know, you, so there is a difference. Uh, understanding that digital space is very important. Being able to have entrepreneurial skills, strategic skills, strategy yeah. skills, and also information technology skills. That's yeah. what digital yeah. leadership entails. But then the characteristics one is very important because it also has to do with the well-being of yourself and well-being of the people around you that you lead. Absolutely. Very well said, Maya. I think it's just not one, but so many things put together. You have to be kind. You still have to be firm with your beliefs and how you would want things to be in order, how you would like your team to be. And at the same time, have a strategic view of, you know, how you would like your uh, things to work. And of, yeah. of course, as you very rightly said, you have to be a digital leader. With You have to have to embrace change and keep moving forward. Absolutely amazing. So uh, tell me one thing. I mean, you, you, you've you spoken so much about leadership. Who do you think is a strategic leader? Um, I will tell you this, and I'm very proud and honored to say it. I'm an Emirati national, and I look up to my leaders. Before my leaders, I looked up to my mother, because my mother oh. is a principal and an owner of a school herself. And I supported her uh, for all these years and she taught me all the skills. So before anybody, my mom is my role model. But today, strategically thinking in the sense of smartness, innovation, um, I look towards my leaders and I learn from them because you have to keep up with what the UAE is calling for. We are calling to be the first, the best, yeah. the, the, the most, the highest. So for us as, as people, Emirati nationals, and even for those residents that live with us together in harmony, we, I, I definitely look up to them to be able to plan the next, for the next generation, because we are in this together. Yeah. So we have to keep up with all this um, futuristic trend that's going, that's the way they're going, whether economically, so, so socially, financially, environmental, you know, there's a whole academic, even through education, health. I mean, we look at COVID today, uh, it's so fast. Yeah. And if you look at the pace, everything is just, the change is so rapid, you, you, you're unable to wrap your, your head around it. But then when you look at the leadership, they are solid. God bless them. You look up yeah. to them and you say, okay, tomorrow will be better, you know, and you plan accordingly. That comes from obviously the leaders and the stability that they provide us that we're able to think. Because imagine if we were politically unstable, you won't be able to think for the future. You'll be yeah. only afraid for your present. So yeah. we are blessed. We are blessed as a nation. Alhamdulillah. 
Absolutely. I think as a strategic leader, it's very important to have your vision very, very clear and also for your team to be aligned with your vision only then the things move forward, you know, be very progressive, be very adaptable at the same time, exhibit all the qualities of a good leader that can bring the teams together. I think you have said this absolutely very well, Maya. Maya, you have been very independent. And as you said, you have always been inspired by your own mom. And, you know, she has been the principal and an owner of a school herself. But then, you know, uh, uh, as you started early in life and started very raw, to take up the position of a vice principal. What is your advice to budding women entrepreneurs today who are just wanting to make a start? Um, coming from somebody that, you know, with all of that, I have an artistic side and I have a little abaya line that I like to, to play with and I kind of let loose there. It's tough. Starting from zero is tough. Yeah. I realized that because of the type of, um, of industry that I'm in, women like to touch and feel fabric. They like to see it. So some things don't work online. Some things you can sell online and some don't work online really and truly. But it's not impossible. So if I were to give advice, I would say, make sure you have when you think of that big idea, think from passion. That's number one. Yeah. It has yeah. to be something you're passionate about that you want to eat, drink, breathe, and sleep with every day. <laughs> That's one. The other thing, not just plan, but plan digitally. Find yourself in a digital space. In other words, find your digital voice in a digital space. Wow. Because you have to have that. You cannot just think of now actually have it, having a brick and mortar school is, it, you know, we learned from COVID that buildings don't make education, right? People make education because everything has been, has gone online. So now again, any industry, you have to find a digital voice in the digital space. A brick and mortar store store of Abaya will not make it. You have to find that, that space where you're able to be passionate about, but also be tech savvy. And if you don't know, try to find people that will, ha will help you, guide you, learn a little bit about business, entrepreneurship. It's something that I'm having to relearn again. Um, yeah. It's not easy, um, but it's not impossible. Yeah, I think you have said it quite right, you know, it's very important to have the passion within you. If you do not have the passion, then you will not be able to make it because as you very rightly said, sleep, eat, drink, your passion, the work that you want to get into, that is what is going to make you a good entrepreneur. And of course, like you said, planning is everything. You know, if you don't plan, if you don't have the vision to make it work. And uh, I had read somewhere, you know, if you can vision your things, you can definitely make it, you know. So have that vision in your eyes and go ahead with the right plan. Absolutely great. You know, I feel it's very important for all of us to feel that transformation. You know, we need to transform our perspectives, our thoughts with the changing times. Like COVID has really changed us a big time, you know. And so we need to definitely bring about that change in our working styles the way we think so what according to you are the qualities of any leader that can help bring those changes in any organization very good question um, the one point that stands out you have to have digital skills that's for sure and I, I'm, I'm stressing on it a lot because my PhD is about that is how, what is what is the next wave of leadership what is needed in a leader well, wow. business skills, entrepreneur skills, that's one side. Strategic skills is one side. IT skills is one side. But there is one important side that a lot of people have not really paid attention to, and I'm focusing on it. And that's the well-being of a leader and thus the well-being of his team members and his production and, and, and. What we mean by well-being is specifically psychological well-being. Yeah. So... To be able to lead and to be able to transform and to change, 
a big word stands out and that is adapt. Yeah. You have to have the skills of adaptation. You have to be able to have that, that mentality where it's okay. Like you talk to yourself and you say, it's okay. I can do this. Um, stay positive. I need, to, I need to keep this together. If you think about digital transformation, you think about the way the wave is. I, I graduated in what, 1999? We, I didn't have, I remember we, the, 1997 is when I had my, my Yahoo email. I was like, what the hell is Yahoo? You know? <laughs> so it was like, it was the beginning. Mobile phones were just coming out. Yeah. So can you imagine what I studied in 1995 is, is not irrelevant, but is only relevant to a certain extent. Yeah. So today, today even they're questioning education and they're questioning High, uh, uh, university and higher education. Google has come up with this idea where, a disruptive idea where they have to, they're thinking of, which I think is already ap ap applicable, you just take courses and uh, depending on your needs, on your digital or passionate or whatever entrepreneurship you want to do, and you take courses that will be, that will be equivalent to a university degree and that's good enough. So you take what you need. You don't take what you have to take. There's a difference. Yeah. So you basically invest your time in the right courses in the right, for the right time, and then you start working immediately. Sure. So that needs a mentality to adapt. And if, if myself, I'm one of them, if I don't get on the wagon, the wagon will leave, the train will leave, and I'll be left behind. Absolutely. So I eat it. You know, so you have that option. You have to understand that you will be relevant to a certain point if you don't adapt, if you don't change. To change and adapt in the proper way, you need healthy mental health, mental well-being, psychology. That has to be put together and really highlighted under any leadership, anybody that is forward thinking and has this leadership skills, you have to also have those psychological well-being skills to be able to, it's almost like if I were to say, it's almost like your traveling bag. You need your toothbrush, you need your, you know, you need your brush, you need your perfume, you need your toothpaste. It's like that. You need wow. that, that well-being to put you intact and be able to move forward quickly. Yeah, I think this is very well said. Maya, your, uh, the, the way you transform your organization is by staying healthy. It's just like your rescue bag that you are, you know, you would like to have with you. So it is as important as your rescue bag to always stay mentally agile, stay healthy so that you can take the right decisions for your organization, for your people. So it's yeah. all about staying mentally agile and healthy. Absolutely lovely. Tell me, you have been talking about mental health I think there is a lot of you know communication going around about you know gender diversity about inclusion in organization and I feel you know when we are talking about mental health we should also be you know talking about as it's very important for anyone to stay adaptable you know we should also be you know very inclusive today in the organization and embrace diversity what are your thoughts there the most important diverse point that needs to be addressed is our two, two sectors, actually. One is the female leaders, more female leaders. Female women are everywhere. Yeah. But as you go up the ladder, it thins out. So there is a need there. And then the other inclusive issue is special needs. So people with, determ you know, with, with determination, people of determination need that chance, need that push, need that heart and might from the organizations to embrace them and actually put them to work based on what they're capable of. Absolutely. So those are two important that I won't say that they are neglected, but they have been in the past. And as we're moving forward with all the openness of social media, people are becoming 
more aware of this inclusive uh, environment in organizations. It is needed and you can't run away from it. Absolutely. Very well said. I think that is very, very important for people to understand this. This is the need of the hour, you know, because the do more diverse people we have from uh, different skill sets, from different backgrounds, the more perspectives we have in the organization to have uh, exponential growth of the organization because more the number of people to give their brain and give their skill sets to anything, it only grows and gets better. Very right. And, you know, I also feel, Maya, you know, uh, all said and done with, we have been propagating it. We have been propagating so many things, be a good leader, being a strategic leader, uh, work on the mental well-being of yourself. Uh, you be a leader, uh, you know, who can be a role model to people to the, in the organization, be adaptable. There are so many things, you know, so many learnings we are imparting day in and day out for people to absorb and imbibe in their system to become better and good leaders. But I feel there is something missing, you know. And so have you felt that there is a difference in knowledge and learning? It's interesting that you ask that question because today it's a knowledge economy. It's not a learning economy. Yeah. So knowledge economy doesn't come only from universities. Now, with, with all these outlets where you can learn, you have no excuse not to learn. Yeah, you can learn in in micro learning video format. You can learn in two three hours uh, of YouTube format. You can learn on Audible if you that's if you're a listener listening kind of learner. Um, learning only defines the type of learner that you are: audio, visual, audio, um, read and write, or kinesthetic. Learning the term learning defines how you learn like the, the, it is a it's an action that you're going to learn but knowledge it's so many outlets so there is a difference there if i'm gonna wait um for me to go to 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 be able to improve on my knowledge i don't have to i can't take it as an excuse now i i need to register in so and so course there are MOOCs now where you can just register for free in the highest, best, you know, uh, universities um, worldwide and for free. And you, if you want the certificate, you pay $60 and you get it. And it's certified. So knowledge is available. And uh, it, it, you can't, we, we can't say, oh, we didn't get the chance to go to school. Not anymore, finish, we're done. We're in an era now where if you are not uh, learning automatically from whatever, whatever screens you're seeing, there's a problem. <laughs> there's an issue. Yeah. You know, you learn yeah. without feeling, like you learn without even the intention of learning. It's a knowledge economy. It's a knowledge economy today. Lovely. I really love this. This is indeed the knowledge economy. You know, it's all about imbibing all that is going around you, the learnings and implement the same in your life. I think that is what gets the ball rolling. You need to transform yourself, learn from what you have learned and imbibe it in your systems, practice what you talk. I think that is what it is all about. And as Maya very rightly said today, you do not have any excuse because it's available everywhere and available for free. It's just about how you make use of it. Very well said, Maya. Absolutely right. Okay, Maya, tell me one thing. You have been an inspiration to so many of them. You are quite a popular leader. And we also know you are quite inspired by your mom. But other than that, who is that one person who really inspires you to take the day head on, start your day fresh, even during times like these pandemic, the unprecedented times that have just hit the economy really badly. It has completely created an upheaval all across different platforms, different verticals. The life is really unstable. How do you start your day and feel inspired every single day? My inspiration is my Lord. Yeah. It's the source of my energy. If I were to tell you it's this person or that person, it's not. I went through depression for five years. Nobody helped me but myself. No. But nobody helped me but the Lord. Yeah. Because he gave me the strength to get better. To think and to come out of my, the gutter in your brain. When you're that low, 
and you think of losing or hurting yourself twice in five years, um, you think, thank God, it's because of the Lord that I'm here today. Yeah. And it's because of the Lord, he, I mean, I'm grateful because it was because of that depression that made me the person I am today. And I've learned so much just from that journey, journey of, of finding what my real passion is. I used to be asked, what is your hobby? At the time, everybody had the same hobby because even the hobbies were not unique because we were, we were supposed to say reading and swimming. And yeah. if it wasn't reading and swimming, you are judged that, oh, she doesn't like reading. Neither does he. <laughs> but yeah. but we, were even, we were even fed. Our, even our passion, our hobbies were fed. When I went into depression, I didn't know what my, I didn't know if I had a hobby. I didn't know what my passion was. When you find out what your passion is, you'll know your purpose in life. You'll know yeah. the reason why you were brought. We are such as the moon, such as the universe, such as the air. Every, every creature on this earth has a purpose. The moon shines in the morning, gives you whatever, whatever you get from it. It has a job. The moon has a job. Every, every creature has a duty. So what is your duty? Your duty is to eat, drink, sleep, and marry and have children, then die? That cannot be the duty. There must be something much more inspirational. Yeah. But what is it? It was because of that depression that I was able to come out of it. COVID hit, I went through another little one, little depression, but it wasn't, it didn't last but two weeks. And therefore I decided I had to self-discipline myself. I have to learn how to wake up every morning motivated on my own. Nobody will help you, nobody but you. It's not being selfish, but it's the fact, it's the truth. But it doesn't mean that nobody helps you but you, that you don't love others. Once you'll be able to come out strong, you'll be able to give because then you'll know what you're the meaning of you being on this earth is. So to be honest, it's the Lord. Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed. I totally loved this uh, piece of information that you shared with us. Maya, thank you so much. It is so, so, so heartwarming to know this. I mean, the way you have, uh, you know, fought with your fears, the way you have fought with that weakness, I think this is so inspiring for so many other people to know. And the, the confidence and the, uh, you know, uh, the thought that you speak with about this, I think this is something really amazing and something very unique about you, you know, to be able to accept what you have gone through and still stay inspired and inspire others. Because I think it is very, very strong on your side to be able to fight it back and tell people that you still, I mean, you, you are doing so well for yourself professionally. And if you can fight out your personal negatives i think this is something so powerful you are indeed a power woman i'm really really proud to have you here on my show because this is called power talk with archana and yeah. to be talking to a powerful woman who has such strength mental strength i think this is really amazing hats mm -hmm. off to you and we wish you lots of love and lots of luck and lots of good fortune and abundance to come your way and to always stay strong as you are and keep inspiring everyone. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Bless, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Maya. That was Maya Alhaviri, amazing person. We started a conversation on leadership, but then as we went along, I realized what a wonderful human being she is. The way she has fought with her weaknesses and come out absolutely strong with flying colors. I think that is the highlight of this conversation. What come may, you need to fight your weaknesses, your negatives and come out smiling in life. I think this is the only take and I really found this really beautiful from this conversation and I would really urge all of you to listen to the way she has handled her life and understood that it's only you and you or yourself who can support yourself to fight the negatives and stay resilient all along. I think this is something really beautiful. I wish her all the best. Best and I wish you all the very best in life and stay tuned for more.